Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Marvel Snap video. So today is one of my down days where I'm not able to pull a mystery card. However, we do have a new featured location, and that location being Mindscape. Mindscape is a location that's not typically viewed very positively, and I tend to agree on games where you don't know or you don't anticipate that you're getting Mindscape. Because then let's say you're building a Hella deck that pretty much tanks your entire last turn in being able to resummon those cards. However, I think that changes a little bit whenever you're able to anticipate it as the primary location. So that is the main goal of today's video. Lean in and get as much upside out of Mindscape as we possibly can, which is where we came upon this deck. So we tried about three or four different iterations, and this is the one that feels the absolute very best to play. So I piloted a couple of games and it just feels really, really solid. All of the combos work really well. And you can do some really cool and cheeky things on that final turn. So on turn five before you swap hands or on turn six if Mindscape is not in play. So with that being said, let's run through some of the key combos. So Mindscape being that on turn six, you swap hands with your opponent. So this tells me I want to do a couple of things. I wanna dump my hand so that I'm not giving them any resources to play off of. This is where Blade and Hellcow come in. It helps that both of these cards are overstatted for their cost, so we can use this to kind of help swing a couple of locations on that final turn before switching hands and giving them only what they top deck to play. And then a lot of the rest of the deck is geared around winning early. Maximus is going to be a really good card for us to drop on turn 5 so that we can guarantee that we get at least two resources from our opponent. Of course, Maximus having the on reveal, your opponent draws two cards. So even if they dump their hand with a Hell Cow or a similar strategy to us, then we're still gonna get two cards in return. So we're still gonna have three resources to drop on turn six. And speaking of resources and swapping hands, that's where Quinjet comes in. Quinjet is very unique in that cards that didn't start in your deck cost one less. So let's say we get into a game and they're really slow playing it. They have four cards in hand. We are gonna drop our Maximus on turn five. We can drop Quinjet alongside that. And then that's gonna discount any card that they send us by one. So we can make a really big, really impactful turn six to really help swing and lock down the game. And then really the bread and butter to this deck Whenever I first thought of Mindscape, I thought I thought people are going to run Scarlet Witch, they're going to run Rhino, they're going to run Storm, they're going to run cards that are designed to change that location. Because most people don't want to play into Mindscape because it's really hard to build around. You want to build your deck into the best possible version that it can, and so sending some of those resources to your opponent always comes with a little bit of a sting. So Cosmo has the ongoing ability, on reveal abilities won't happen at this location. So ideally, what we want to do is have initiative going into turn three. That way we can drop Cosmo. Even if they drop a storm, we're going to counter that on reveal ability, and it's not going to be able to be changed anymore after that point. So then we're going to be able to guarantee that we swap hands. The rest of the deck is just designed around winning early. We want to win early. That way we have initiative going into turn three to drop our Cosmo first. So how do we do that? We have Sunspot and Nightcrawler, both being pretty decent cards. We can drop Nightcrawler into an unknown location, and then even if if it is a negative downside once it's revealed, we can move him out somewhere that's better fitted for our deck and our situation. And then Sunspot being a good one drop card in that he builds up over time. Next up we have Strong Guy. So Strong Guy's main purpose in this deck is for the games that we don't draw into Mindscape, or maybe they're running a similar strategy where they dump their hand. So if they do dump their hand and we have Strong Guy on the board, that's gonna guarantee that we're able to proc his ongoing ability and he's gonna become a two cost nine power. And then similarly, if we drop him and we don't draw into Mindscape and we don't swap hands, then we're gonna be able to have Hellcow and Blade come in to finish off the rest of our deck. We have a relatively low power curve with this deck, knowing that we're only gonna play up to turn five. So we don't want any six drop cards. We don't really want any five cost cards because we wanna be able to drop a few combo pieces on turn five, such as Maximus Quinjet or Maximus Hellcow or Hellcow Blade Quinjet. Um, a lot of really good combos and we wanna drop multiple cards on that turn. Next up we have Mysterio. So Mysterio serves a couple of really cool functions here. Typically you want to run Mysterio in like a hand buff deck, but with this one we are planning on dropping him on turn 2. So that is going to create some really big uncertainty 
with the opponent. They're not going to know where that 5 power lies, and so that could be the make or break difference between winning or losing a lane, and it becomes really hard to anticipate at that point. And then the last card that we have is Crossbones. So Crossbones is just a really highly statted 4 cost card. He does have the downside of you can only play this at locations where you have more power than your opponent, but with knowing that we are pushing to have initiative going into turn 5, turn 6, uh, pretty much all throughout the game, we should almost always have at least one or two locations where we can drop crossbones. And so that is the general idea of the deck. I'm really excited to pilot through some games. I did try a couple ahead of times because because this deck list took a little bit of tweaking and teching to make it feel right. But the few games that I played with this deck list felt so incredibly solid that I, I just I knew this was the one that we had to lock in. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into a few games. I will see you there. We do have Blade, Nightcrawler, Quinjet, some of our cheaper options. And more importantly, we have Cosmo, which is going to help us lock down a location. We just want to be able to make sure that we have have initiative going into that turn that might going into turn three so I think we go ahead and drop our nightcrawler into nowhere knowing that he's gonna be able to bounce around as needed and then do we go ahead and drop our Quinjet here as well they don't know what kind of deck we're running just yet Ooh, and they have invisible woman so what kind of deck are they running are they gonna be running like a hella deck a discard deck a strong ongoing ability deck uh, but because we are winning nowhere by more than their winning sewer system, we do have initiative. So even if they have a storm to change Mindscape, we're going to be able to stop that from happening here. So we're going to play our Cosmo, that being our highest priority card for, <laughs> for turn. Uh, they, do <clears throat> they do have a discard deck, but we blocked their blade discard here. And so we're going to be able to guarantee that we swap hands unless they can ramp into their Hella. If that's what they're running which with a discard deck i i assume that that's what they're doing um, so unless they can ramp into it it doesn't look like they're going to be able to have a whole lot of luck and so maybe we even do something like a storm sunspot into sewer system that is going to give us enough power even if they play resources here this upcoming turn it's not going to get revealed so we're going to have one power here so we're gonna have one power so we're gonna tie for this lane so we still won't be able to drop our crossbones so actually i think because of that we do move our nightcrawler over for now that's gonna let us drop crossbones into sewer system on the last turn that cards can be played there um and then since it's invisible woman it's still not going to reveal those cards so we won't know exactly oh yeah never mind we were changing the the invisible location so we didn't need to move that over there um, and so we can do a crossbones here, we can do a blade, or we can do a blade here and a crossbones in mid, because a crossbone or a blade is not going to discard from nowhere. It's not going to discard over in Mindscape, but we're going to be able to get the eight power advantage from crossbones in nowhere. Blade is going to discard our hell cow, and we just have to hope that whatever they have under, <laughs> under this mystery door is not going to be able to beat our eight plus power whatever we end up with after next turn and so we are sending them or they did send us oh they sent us a lot of resources um, unfortunately for us we did play blade here otherwise we would have been able to play giganto but we flooded that location so we wouldn't have ever, we never would have been able to play giganto here so juggernaut's going not going to trigger we know that we didn't send them any resources so i think we pass here uh, three power is not going to be enough to stop this if they drew into a high power card on turn six they may be able to push this lane and so maybe the juggernaut would, would do the trick but not knowing what power they have under these two cards so likely like a moon knight and maybe a gambit or could be even a, a moon knight and then a a sword master so that'd be 10 power it it's gonna we want to be able to pad our sunspot as much as possible so i'm going to just pass here i'm gonna let nowhere be as it is and so they did only drop resources into mindscape so they have a calling wing they have a swarm we do pull out the win because of our sunspot sunspot buff there um so because we didn't send them any resources they just had to go off of what they drew, and they ended up drawing a Lady Sif, which is definitely not a good card for turn six. Uh, <laughs> but overall, that felt very, very, it felt it, it felt pretty good. Uh, the Crossbones being able to push out quite a bit of power on turn 
uh, four or five feels like it re will really help us swing the lane um, when we switch hands and don't give them anything in return that eight power is huge okay so for our first location we do get mindscape which is which is the goal that is what we are wanting to do and so now we just want to try to have have priority or have initiative going into turn three and then ideally we draw into our cosmo um, but the first step is having initiative so we're going to drop Quinjet because of that. We're going to put a little risky and drop Quinjet into the unknown location. And so luckily we get the upside there. But I think we also will drop our strong guy into Mindscape this turn. For the same reason, we want to have we have we want to be winning by enough to have initiative. And so then what do we draw into this turn? Could it be Cosmo? Nah, it's not the it's not the goodest of boys. So I think in that case, we do a little bit of misdirection. We're going to do Storm into Xandar, which will, I mean, unless they change it this turn, it's going to cause them to want to drop their resources into Xandar as well. And so they do drop resources into Xandar still, which is a little bit scary. But we are going to be able to drop some pretty big cards in either a Sunspot or a Hell Cow or a not a crossbones um, i was thinking we could do the crossbones so we're gonna be able to do we could do sunspot hell cow but maybe we give up this location and we do something like a crossbones this turn next turn on turn five we do a, a hell cow a sunspot somewhere and a blade somewhere um, that way we can make sure that we have no cards left in hand or we can do the hell cow into the dark dimension we could do blade into the dark dimension that way, no matter what they give us or what cards they give us, we're going to make sure that we have zero at the end of the game to trigger our strong guy. Um, and they do swarm the, the lanes here, which uh, we did end up give, giving up our, our flooding location. Unfortunately, they kill the Quinjet. So whenever we do switch hands, whatever resources we get from them, we're not going to be able to play at a discount. But I think I think that's okay. Um, we're gonna go with a hell cow. We're gonna go with Mysterio. Well, let's go with Mysterio here. I think we're gonna need resources over here to win. And then we're gonna go with Blade. So we're gonna make sure that we we dump our hand. And then 11 power over here is going to be pretty pretty large in the Dark Dimension. So then all we'll need to do, ooh, and it does still play the token even though it's in the um, the unrevealed location. So 20 power is what we're gonna to have to compete with here. I think we have initiative, so we're gonna flip first. So I think what we do is we go ahead and play our blade. It's not going to discard anything because it will get captured by one of these two. And then we drop our Cosmo. So whatever they're wanting to do here, it's just not going to trigger. We're going to have 20 power over in this lane, which is pretty large. So let's go ahead and snap them back. We know that they have the flooded location. I don't think that that matters because they only were able to draw into one card. Even if these two cards are just the best cards in the game, it's not going to be enough to win them. Um, they're not going to be able to swing Mindscape. Um, and with our discard cards here, I don't think they're going to be able to swing Dark Dimension either. And so then we have Blade, and we have Cosmo, so that their own reveal abilities, whatever they may be, aren't going to trigger. So Kazar being a decent one, if they didn't have all the resources stacked into the flooded location. And so then that comes to 11 power before our mystery. Okay, so it's 13 power, but our actual token is over in Dark Dimension, which is enough to swing the game and swing the lane or swing the lane and swing the game for us giving us an eight cube win next up we have banker rob and so in our opening hand we have our strong guy we have quinjet um i think we go with the similar play as last time and drop quinjet into the unknown we want to be able to try and push our our initiative in case we draw into cosmo and need to drop him to stop them from changing a location and so we actually get a discount on the arrow, which arrow being a card we don't have unlocked yet in our in our actual collection log, but being a pretty cool card. On reveal, move all enemy cards played this turn to this location. So we can use this, especially if we have initiative, we can use this to kind of misdirect and re-guide cards that would be triggering an Angela to buff up, uh, to be triggering a, a Nova to be destroyed by like a Carnage. A lot of really cool utility and cool things you can do with an arrow. So I think we play Strong Guy into Xandar, and then depending on what the last location is, we probably play our Storm next turn. So they just drop a Misty Knight. So that being a blank token, nope, it was created by the hub. Okay, so it is Mindscape. We do have initiative. We're going to play our Cosmo here. That's going to lock in the fact that we're going to change hands. 
um, at the end of the game. And so with that, we are gonna go ahead and snap. Feels like we're gonna get a pretty good advantage out of this. We're gonna have a Maximus that we can play on turn five. Um, and they did a green goblin, interesting, which sends it our way. It really limits what we're able to, the space that we have to play, um, which is kind of unfortunate. But I think what we do here, do we turn this location into a stormed lane, knowing that we're gonna get a pretty big buff in the six power, likely get a pretty big buff in the six power drop over here. And if not, then when we switch hands, we have enough resources that we can support it. Or do we go with something a little more, a little higher power in something like an arrow here, which is gonna pull any cards that they drop anywhere this turn over into this location. And so with that, I almost wanna play it in the hub um, to try and get them to drop and cap out resources here. Um, and so hopefully, oh wow. And so they only drop one resource uh, and that being Jubilee. So we don't pull anything in um, and it being Juggernaut, <laughs> what are the odds that that's what they pull into? Okay, um, so we do win, we're, we're winning Mindscape off of that. But after this turn, we are going to switch switch hands. So how do we, how do we play this? I think what we do is we drop a, a Maximus here. And then I think we also drop a Mysterio here. That's going to give us 13 power. Which is, which is gonna push us up to 12 power, unless they, dr unless they drop eight power, seven power. Seven power would tie. And then we just have to worry about either Xandar or Mindscape, and right now we're winning Mindscape pretty decently. Um, so I think securing the hub is going to be important here. And so they drop all but three of their cards. We're, we've, we, of course, are going to cause them to draw two more. So now they, they're going to give us five cards in return. And so they did the same thing. They dropped a Maximus, which is a great play line. Um, and it, we actually drew into our Blade and our Hell Cow. So that's going to, of course, give them chances to discard additional cards. And so how do we come up over and win? So they give, oh my gosh, they give us the ultimate, the ultimate play. They give us a Lady Sif Ghost Rider infinite combo did they mean to do that so the lady sif here this is the real token so that's going to be an extra nine to this lane so that gives us 13 and so i think that's going to be enough to win this location because they're going to have to try to push and swap um, the mindscape location and then i think we do the ghost rider here which is going to push power over here i think just for for giggles we go ahead and drop a night crawler into mindscape so yes, we gave them quite a few resources, but I don't think any of them are gonna be enough. We're gonna let this play out. This is absolutely going to win this, this lane, unless they top decked, and the last card in their deck was a Shang-Chi. Um, I don't think we have anything to worry about in this scenario, in this play line. And so they dropped all of their resources into Mindscape. Um, I guess not thinking we'd be able to, to, to swing the other two locations. So of course the Lady Sif is going to discard the Infinite, which we then resummon to very heavily swing Xandar. Um, we already have the hub in our favor, but we have the real Mysterio token there, so it pushes us up even further. And even if we had not, if the real Mysterio token here, it would have pushed us up, up over the Mindscape limit anyways. So we still would have won two locations. Um, and so just so many fun counterplays to forcing a Mindscape switch in either Strong Guy if they dump their hand or a Maximus to give us more resources. Um, it just gave us a lot of tools in our arsenal to be able to find a way to win. So next up we have King Nothing 2000. We do have Space Throne as one of our locations. And I think I'm actually going to drop Nightcrawler into it to start the game. So this is gonna stop them from doing stuff like a green goblin or sending stuff into this lane that we don't necessarily want um, or, or need. And so then we're also gonna be able to drop Mysterio because of that. Um, I think it gives us a lot, of, a lot of resources and a lot of tools. I think we're gonna drop our strong guy, at least until we know if this last location is Mindscape. If it's Mindscape, we can find a way to work within those restraints. If not, um, which it's not, we can drop a few strong guys. We know we're gonna be able to drop Hell Cow at the end to discard two, so we probably would end up dropping it on turn three, or turn five and turn six to discard four cards. And so I think what we do here is we copy our strong guy one more time 
that gives it that's a really hard target for them to come up over and win and i wonder if oh so it does um so if we if we move nightcrawler out the power level still registers for our crossbones so we could still push him there which typically you can only play if you have more power than your opponent at that location and so even though we're doing a little swapsy um, and that's going to be the only resource there it's kind of a sneaky way to get it in um, and i didn't realize that was a a potential play line so do we do that this turn i think we do i think we move nightcrawler out we push our crossbones over even though i'd like for it to be oh no we can't maybe if we do it real fast watch because the because the box is there for a split second oh <gasps> Oh no, <laughs> oh no. Okay, so in that case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our strong guy, we're gonna do a hell cow, which is gonna copy the hell cow. Um, but then we're, we're relying very heavily on our macho men here. And so the first card that they copy, is that a Nakia? Or what are they What are they planning on copying here? So we discard a Mysterio and our Cosmo. Neither one are necessarily just like super important. And they copy their Jubilee, which it's kind of strange in that we have pretty limited space and so if you're wanting to continue to pull you're still using a one power card as like a placeholder here um, interestingly enough that's how they that's what they what's that's what they go with um and so how do we play this one we could do a crossbones here and then next turn we're going to be able to do both a hell cow and a maximus but that would give us three cards we would need to discard so whatever we card we play we want it to not be we want it to not be in cloning vats so that we don't draw that additional resource because um, we're going to need to discard it next turn so do we just go with storm because we can't play crossbones here since it's a tie so i think we're just going to go with storm in this scenario we see what they drop which is probably a jubilee if they if they oh no a doc ock um, so that's going to pull in our maximus and our hell cow unfortunately um, and then we're not going to be able to really do much with our Nightcrawler here. So going into the final turn, uh, we, do have <laughs> we do have Juggernaut, which is going to be sneaky. Um, so let's say they try to drop 4 power, whatever they end up dropping. We are not playing a card into Cloning Vats, so it's not going to duplicate. So we're going to be able to trigger our strong guys here. Whatever they play here is going to get pushed off into one of these other lanes. So we're going to win this location. We probably win this one because of the strong guy buffs. Um, normally I would snap, but I want to see this play out. I think for content, I think it's going to be very, very satisfying to see. And so let's go ahead and drop our Juggernaut. They don't play anything into the Space Throne. Interesting. So they do a Shang-Chi, oh, which feels so bad, um, which does win them the Cloning Vats. And then they do a Hell Cow, which is not enough to win them the flooded location. And so they weren't able, they weren't quite able to push enough power. Had they dropped the Hell Cow into Space Throne, knowing that we had a Nightcrawler here, if that was the playline they thought we were going to do so that we didn't uh, duplicate whatever card this was, um, I think the Hell Cow would have been the most advantageous play. Even if they had played their Hell Cow here, we would have pushed it off over into whatever lane. And so it wouldn't have necessarily mattered. Um, but that would have given them the most opportunity to win. All right, so next up we have Omnix, and the first location is Mindscape. So we do know that we're going to be able to swap hands, and if we draw into a Cosmo, we'll play it there to lock it in. And I think because of that, because we want to have initiative going into turn three, we are going to drop our Sunspot into an unknown location. That's going to give us the strategic, the strategic hole, oh, and we almost had the upside of playing it into the Sanctum Sanctorum, but unfortunately we did not. I think what we do here is we hold our Nightcrawler until later in the game. I think we drop our strong guy here. That way we have the potential high power buff on the board already. And so they drop an Angela. So they're running a swarm style deck. We have our Sunspot, we have Mysterio. We don't have a way to lock in Mindscape, but I don't know that we necessarily need to either. As long as we keep initiative, then we will be able to drop our crossbones into either one of the lanes. And so I think we drop our Mysterio, our real Mysterio, into New York. It's going to put a token into Mindscape. It's not going to put anything into Sanctum Sanctorum. Because the way Mysterio functions is that the tokens are played rather than added. And so that's why it would trigger Angela, it triggers Bishop. It has a, a lot of good utilization and upside in that. So I think we do our crossbones into New York here, which is going to allow us to kind of expand this lead. And then if we need to... On turn six, we can move 
this Mysterio out, um, but I don't know that that's the play line either. And with them being a swarm deck, I want, I'm gonna go ahead and move Nightcrawler this turn just in case they have like an Electra. We don't wanna give them the chance to destroy our Nightcrawler. And so they play a Kazar, which is gonna buff up any one drop cards that they have. Do we ever play this? Um, and just lock down the location entirely. So this is the turn before we swap hands. So I think what we do is we do our Maximus and then we do our Blade um, wherever we think we're going to need additional resources. And so I think what we do is we drop our Blade into Mindscape knowing that on, ne on the next turn, we're gonna be able to move cards out into New York if we want to. Um, so that's of course going to cause them to draw two, two cards so that we're gonna have a few more resources to work with. And so we drop our Maximus, we drop our Blade. They do swarm the board a little bit, but they still have four cards in hand after our Maximus triggered. And so as long as we can be competitive and have a big enough lead in one of these two locations, then I think we have a pretty good shot of winning here. And so they did drop an Electra, so, but they also have a Kazar, so their Nightcrawler is stronger than ours. So what if we do something like, they only have one card, they only have whatever card they drew, and so they're gonna move a Nightcrawler. I would anticipate that they play a card into Mindscape to try and hold that location down. And so what if we moved our fake token out? That would give us 26 here. Is 26 enough if they drop, so they would get one, two, three, so they would need to get five power here. Whatever they drew would need to be at least five power. Um, I don't know that it's great, but I think it's what we have. And I'm going to go for, for the win, and we're gonna move our Nightcrawler into New York instead of our Okoye, because we're not gonna be able to win Sanctum Sanctorum. They're gonna move their Nightcrawler over. And so we, the one additional point may be enough to win, um, but if this is like a Chavez, then it's not. And so let's see. It triggers a couple of things, which then ties that location. They win the mid location by three. We win the right location by 10. Oh my gosh. That like <sighs> swarm decks are swarm decks are next level guys. Um, so it's, they have the ability to pump out so much power. They were almost, even with a one cost card, they were almost able to push out that additional power that they needed to overcome us here. Um, just <laughs> very, very fortunate that we uh, had enough power in our crossbones, which is the main thing that pushed us up over what we needed to be in here. But with that last game out of the way, we are gonna go ahead and end the video here. I came into this video really dreading Mindscape. So the it feels like the common opinion is Mindscape is just really blah. It's like a really bad location, a really negative location to get into. And I, I tend to agree on standard games. Whenever you're not anticipating Mindscape, it, it, it really counter, it's really counterproductive. If you're running a Hella deck, that pretty much wipes your entire deck. But if you are playing into it and expecting the Mindscape to happen, you can do a lot of cool strategic things in how you build your deck to make sure of a couple things. You can make sure that you're not giving them any resources to play off of. So then they only have one card to drop on turn six. Two, you're able to lock in that location with Cosmo to make sure that they can't change it or they can't shift that location. And then you can do some other cool cheeky things like dropping a Maximus on turn five to make sure that you at least get two resources in return after that Mindscape initiates. Um, and just a lot of cool things. The Quinjet, the interaction is really cool there as well. Um, so I had a lot more fun with this Mindscape location than I, than I really thought I would going into it. But I am going to go ahead and end the video here. If you guys liked it, make sure to leave a like down below. It helps the videos get discovered and it lets me know that you are enjoying the content. And if you did enjoy the content, make sure to leave a comment down below. Um, I love interacting with you guys, even if it's just a, hey, nice game. Um, I enjoy interacting with you guys. I always appreciate the, the feedback, whether it's uh, positive, uh, sometimes negative, and then constructive. As long as it's constructive, I'm okay with, you know, hey, this was a misplay. You should have done this instead. I like being able to kind of look at that different perspective and be able to learn and grow from it. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. This has been TLSG. Later guys.